Hi, I'm Annie Cap. This recap is part 2 of a series and the link to part 1 is in the description. Previously, Sable was brought to this world 3 years ago and has no memories of his past. He is told by the headmaster at his academy that he will be going on a field program to create a witch village where witches are not welcome. On the way, he uses a staff that consumes and kills the wielder. However, he manages to survive because it is revealed that he has unlimited supply of magic power. The story continues as we see the trio have finally arrived at the village and are greeted by a priest. He already knows how they intend to make magic more common in their village but is rude to them as he has held ill will toward witches for a long time. He recommends they leave and explains that the beast fallen that attacked them is actually a mercenary who solidifies a witch's control over their village. The person who was meant to be their supervisor surrendered the village to the powerful invader and vanished. They wonder why they would be sent there if this were the case and Sable realizes that everyone selected for the program are all problems for the academy. Lo appears and expresses skepticism of the father explaining he may be working with both the beast fallen and even the witch hunter. He explains that if that were the case then he would have killed them already and she insists that he show them around the village to prove he is no enemy. As they walk around the village people speak very fondly of the witch that had originally been in control of the village. The man explains that he just can't understand why she surrendered the village without putting up a fight. They arrive at the place where they will be staying to find that there are dolls hanging from it. He explains that the witch and mercenary do not tolerate escape so they use a warning for those considering running. Inside, Lo explains that they will now kill the witch controlling the village and also the headmaster Albus for not only fooling her students but her as well. The students want to get the help of the army but Sable understands that it would only lead to the village becoming a battlefield. He wants them to fight on their own but Kuro reminds him of just how strong the mercenary was and can only imagine the strength of the witch he works for. Sable retorts that if they don't then they will all be expelled and have their memories erased. Kuro wants to know if he would rather die than start over and Sable reveals that after picking up the staff of Ludens he found he is not afraid to die. His words deeply upset Holt and she runs off but Sable can't understand why. Kuro must explain to him the basic concept of being friends and how they don't want to see each other die. Sable realizes he wouldn't want to see her die either and runs off to apologize. Hulk goes to the church and is met by a young girl named Lily who came to see why she was crying but is scared as she is supposed to avoid being seen. Back at the house, Lo reveals their low chance of winning and Kudo wonders about what the point of fighting is then. She explains that for her, entertainment is all that matters and her three students are what interests her the most at the moment. The father arrives and sends Lily off. Holt realizes now that Sable didn't understand what was wrong about what he said and she just overreacted. The father explains how careless it was for her to run off on her own and she notices the Dia Ignis symbol on his cane. He knows she has betrayed the church and when she calls for help he explains that if her heart is righteous then no one will be hurt. Sable returns to the house explaining how he can't find Holt and Lo reveals that she can track any maid she has met using magic. Their search leads them to a cave where they find blood and Lo begins to sense that Holt is not alone. Kuro wants to run from the obvious trap but Lo says all they need to do is rely on Ludens to spot hidden traps along the way. Furthermore, she says the Church and Magic Army do not fear fighting witches, specifically referencing their symbol, the Dragon Conqueror King, who found victory in a seemingly hopeless fight. Kuro says that he is not as strong as the King and runs off. However, when he gets outside, he is found by the mercenary who asks if he would like to join him instead. Kuro says that he can't as if he is expelled he won't be able to join the army. But the mercenary reveals that he can get him in the army if he accepts the conditions and forms a witch's blood contract with him. Kuro then asks what he has done with Halt and the mercenary reveals that he killed an aider. Kuro is furious, rejecting his offer and not allowing him to go and kill the rest of his friends. Sable eventually manages to use a simple spell that forms a light as Lo explains to him that any witch would like to have an apprentice like him who has unlimited magic and that includes the ruler of the village. He falls to the ground as he has a memory from his past and Lo says there is no shame if he would turn back, but he refuses. She wants to know why and he simply explains it's because Holt is his friend. She remembers back to when she had one of those, but Sable says she is his friend also and that he would rescue her as well. In that moment they are attacked by the father and trapped inside a room with the mysterious girl. Sable remembers her from his past when she calls to him as she has been waiting for him. He wants an explanation and Lo explains he must calm down so he is not bewitched, but the girl knocks her out. She explains that he is exceptional and better than those he surrounds himself with. 
He asks for Halt and she reveals that she let the mercenary have her. Furthermore, she reveals that she has gone to great lengths to recover him from Albus, including taking the village. She again requests that he come with her to a world more befitting of him, but he rejects her and the idea that his friends are not befitting. Sable explains that he will decide who is worthwhile and she does not qualify. He plans to pour all his magic into one spell in the hopes of at least saving Lo, but she interrupts him and siphons his magical power as she scolds him for thinking about doing something reckless. Lo casts a spell but it is easily rejected and the girl explains that the spell is hers, the magic is hers, and the wisdom is hers. She goes on to say that the art called magic originated from the Grimmar of Zero and that she is its author. Sable now realizes that they never even stood a chance. She continues by saying she is the one who is able to create something from nothing. She is the Mud Black Witch. The theatrics end and Zero finally reveals that she is also the witch who will be supervising the field program. Sable is in shock as she welcomes them and Lo can hardly contain her excitement as she explains that it was a test that he had passed. They are reunited with Holt who reveals that if he had went with the witch he would have been expelled on the spot. She explains that the entire village had known and that their entire group was tested. The father tested her by demanding she continue to spy for the church but she spat in his face. Lo reveals that she found several clues to figure out that they were being tested but didn't say anything. Kudo arrives after passing a test of his own and they all celebrate. Back at the academy, Albus is shocked to find that all three students had passed, considering last year not a single person did. They think that maybe the witch hunter may have helped by bringing the group closer together, so she decides to change his wanted poster from dead or alive to just wanted alive. At the village, Zero reveals that they tried real hard to get them expelled, since their talent is too great. Exceptional mages that are swayed towards evil could mean the end of the world, so they test students with great potential to make sure they are virtuous and expel them if they fail. Zero refers to Holt as the young antlered woman and compares her talents to that of the headmaster. She says that if Kudo continues to develop his healing magic, he will make a name for himself as the immortal mage. As for Sable and his limitless magic, she explains that she cannot see his pinnacle and his potential is endless. They then discuss the details of the field program. They will each have their own shop so that it will be easier for the villagers to request their assistance. She explains she has a paltry magic shop of her own and that they have three days to decide what they want their shop to be. They then enjoy a meal when the mercenary reveals that the priest can actually see. Hulk guesses that he covers his eyes as a fashion statement but he says it's because the light hurts his eyes. Sable asks Zero if she was what brought him to the academy, but she simply tells him that he will remember on his own when he needs to. Outside, Kudo is shocked to see his idol, the Dragon Conqueror King, arrive. He is known by the others as Heath and reveals he has come to deliver messages from the academy that lift all restriction on their magic, thus giving them full authorization to engage in battle. Kudo approaches in the hopes that he will remember rescuing him, and he does. However, Heath is unsure if Kudo would ever make it into the army, but does think he would be a good asset in his squad one day. Later, the students must unfortunately say goodbye to Lo as she successfully completed the escort. However, she reveals she will stay as long as her students continue to grow as that is her main source of entertainment. That night, Lo expresses her concern as she knows that Zero is suffering from a severe case of magic depletion, and a mage like Sable would be a godsend for a witch with her condition. Zero then reveals how a mage had tried to take Sable's power before, killing his mother right in front of him and then perishing by magical overload. Sable would then seal away his own memory, experiencing all manners of oppression as practically a slave, as he was seemingly punishing himself. Zero brought him to the academy to give him a new lease on life. Lo wants to know why she controls his life so much and she reveals that he is her nephew. This means that his father is the evil sorcerer named Thirteen. The one who years ago stole the Grimoire of Zero and caused a war in the kingdom by spreading magic. Two months pass and we find that each of the students have their own shop. Holt is a handy mage that does a variety of jobs, Kudo uses healing magic at a clinic, and Sable runs a magic supply shop out of their house where he lends magic to those in need. Lo visits Sable and wants to know why he never leaves his house, wondering if he is waiting to be asked to dance. He explains that he needs to be there to run his shop and has begun helping his friends with their laundry. Lo was shocked to hear that includes Holt's underwear and goes on a rant on how inappropriate that is, explaining he wouldn't like it if some hairy man was handling his delicates. 
She does concede though that Holt seems to fancy him and recommends taking her somewhere private to tell her how cute she is, as that will surely shoot him up the ladder of adulthood. He explains that he helps with their laundry because he feels like it's his job and feels uneasy if he doesn't do it. She now understands more and praises him for being good, but would eventually ask that he get her some tea leaves so that he would finally leave the house. As he searches, the boy named Laios offers his assistance. They eventually get lost but are approached by a mouse and Laios explains that the girl from the village named Lily befriends them. The pair then follow the mice as they lead them to the village's church, where the boy finds that he is in big trouble with his mother. Sable is then invited inside by the priest where he meets Lily, who explains that she wears a cloak so she doesn't startle Sable. The priest says to let him be startled and removes it. When he asks her to prepare a meal, she is afraid Sable will have an issue with a rodent doing it, but when asked, he doesn't even understand the question. Lily reveals the father's cooking is terrible and he says that is why he asked her to do it. Over their meal, he reveals that the forest is extremely dangerous and that is why adults harshly scold their children who enter it. Furthermore, he warns that moving forward he should think about the dangers that await when going to unknown places. Sable explains he had been looking for tea leaves and the priest wishes he would have asked any adult in the village first as those can be easily found next to Zero's house. His final warning is that Sable should not be content with ignorance so that he can be motivated to learn. That is, unless he wants to spend his whole life inside his shop waiting for Zero to tell him he has passed the program. Later, he runs into Hull who tells him how she had been on a job with the mercenary when they were attacked by wolves. He had to step in when her incantation was taking too long and she accidentally hit him with it. Holt explains that he was furious and she begins to doubt if she is cut out to be a mage as Lily attempts to calm her down. Lo then appears to remind him of his duty as a magic supplier. When they arrive at Zero's house, Zero borrows some of his magic to rescue the mercenary. Sable asks if Holt will be expelled but they say no and the mercenary explains that he only scolded her because he wants her to be better for the next time they team up. Sable then leaves to make sure Laos isn't in too much trouble. Lo expresses concern for how in such a small amount of time Sable has fallen quite far behind the other two, but Zero believes that they should all go at their own pace. The mercenary thinks that he shouldn't have to study if he doesn't want to and he is doing a good job as a magic supplier, but Lo just wants all her students to become incredible and turn the world upside down. At the academy we see that Albus prepares to send Hold'em on a mission to inspect the village, but is concerned since she knows he has resentment towards Sable. Back at the village, Lo teases Zero about how close she is with the mercenary and wants to know why Zero only took the smallest amount of magic from Sable when casting her healing spell. She explains it's because there is no guaranteeing that Sable's magic is truly endless. Lo says that if things don't change, Zero will age and rot away due to her magic depletion. Zero feels that it is normal and that she will embrace it without fear as she will age and rot away with the one she loves. Elsewhere, Hold'em has a memory of when the family he served were killed by Sable's father, 13. In the cart with him is the witch hunter who asks what it is that he wants him to do. Thanks for watching part 2 of this series. All other parts will be linked in a pinned comment below.